In this video, we're going to look at the ratio test, which is a very, very powerful test for absolute convergence or divergence of a series. And the idea is that we know, we've studied before geometric series, series that have a fixed ratio between all the different terms. But there are a ton of different series out there that, while not being the geometric series, are in some sense somewhat related to a geometric series, that in a limit they become similar to a geometric series. And this ratio test is going to be able to apply to this very broad category of series. Let me suppose that I'm interested in the ratio between the terms an plus 1 and an. If it was a geometric series, a geometric series was always just a multiplication by r, so this ratio in a geometric series would always be r. But I'm not going to imagine that that's exactly the case. I'm not going to imagine that it's exactly equal to r. I'm going to imagine that if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, and I'm also going to put absolute values around here because it doesn't really matter, I'm going to imagine that this is equal to some value, and for the purpose of my intuition, I'm just going to assume it's a value like, say, one half. So I'm going to go in and sketch the terms of some particular sequence a n, and then I'm going to imagine what would happen if I added them all up to be a series. So perhaps I'm going to have up here, I'm going to have the height a1, and this is going to occur above the point n equal to 1. Then what I want to have is that for a2, the, the ratio of a2 to a1, well, maybe it's not exactly a half. Maybe it's only going to be a half in the limit, but for, for the moment I'm just going to pretend it's exactly equal to a half. But because of the absolute value signs, it might have a height of a, of a half that's positive, or maybe it's down here somewhere. So maybe I can come along here, and I'm going to say that that's equal to 2. So this is going to be a point at half the height, but in the negative direction. And then maybe it's uh, half the height again, somewhere like that, and then half the height again, and then half the height again, and then I'm going to get, sort of get lost a little bit it's going to be looking like it's going to go all the way along the axis. For a while, it might not be exactly a geometric series. It might not be exactly a ratio of a half. It, it might sort of bounce around and do a bunch of weird stuff for the first 10 terms, for the first million terms. But eventually, it's always going kind of like a geometric series. So I know what a geometric series does. I know when a geometric series converges. It converges if that ratio is less than 1 and it diverges if the ratio is greater than or equal to 1. So I'm kind of expecting a test for this situation in the limit to go analogously, because I don't really care about what happens to the initial finite number of terms. I'm interested what happens in the limit. So here's the ratio test. In each of the three cases, I begin with some series that's the n equal to 1 to infinity of the ans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the limit of the ratio of these terms. And there's three different possibilities. It might be that the limit of those terms is a number which is less than 1. It might be that it's uh, greater than 1 or perhaps equal to infinity. And it might be that the ratio is exactly equal to 1. So this is exactly the same thing as thinking about a geometric series with a ratio less than 1, equal to 1, or greater than 1. And what we're going to say is that if that ratio is less than 1, for example, a half, then our series is going to be not just convergent, it's going to be absolutely convergent. So we've got a very strong claim here because absolute convergence is a stronger claim than just convergence. If you have it being greater than 1, then our series is going to diverge. And these two claims are exactly like it was in the case of a geometric series. But the part where it differs from a geometric series is in the times when the ratio is exactly equal to 1. We know that the geometric series with a ratio of exactly equal to 1, that thing is going to diverge because it's going to be like adding just a plus a plus a plus a plus a plus a plus a. For sure, it's going to diverge. However, there's enough wiggle room. By, by going to the limit here, there's enough wiggle room that, it, in fact, if the, if the ratio of these things eventually becomes 1, the, the eventually part can mean that it either converges or it diverges. We don't know. The ratio test does not give us information. We have to use some other test if this is going to be the case. All right, so let's see how this works in the context of a specific example. I have the sum of 2 to the n over n factorial. And maybe just first of all, I'll note that, that some of the advantages of tests like this is that it allows you to deal with things like the n factorial here. For instance, 
I don't really want to do an integral test if I've got an n factorial here because I don't know what x factorial means in general. So what my strategy is by the ratio test is I want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 all divided by a n in absolute values. All right. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity. Everything here is an absolute value already, so I'm not going to uh, worry about them any further. But the numerator is 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. That's what a n plus 1 is going to be. All divided out by 2n divided by n factorial. All right. Now, I want to try to simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to rewrite it in the following way. First of all, so what does the ratio test tell us? Well, if I go up here, I've got the value of 0. So that is less than 1, and therefore it is absolutely convergent. So it's going to be absolutely convergent by the ratio test. And one way to think about this is that 2 to the n is something that blows up really quickly. It gets very, very large as n gets large. And n factorial also blows up really, really quickly and gets really, really large as n gets large. But we didn't know which of those two things was going to dominate. And what we're learning here is that n factorial is going to dominate the 2 to the n. It gets large way faster than 2 to the n does as n gets large. In fact, it gets large so fast that it's not just that the sequence goes to zero, it's that the series is going to sum up to a finite number and indeed is going to converge absolutely.